Today, I'm gonna give you three things you absolutely do not want to do with your lawn this spring. Number one, you do not want to over fertilize your lawn coming right out of winter. Yes, it's gonna look like crap. Yes, you're ready to push the envelope and ready to get your lawn looking as good as it can. But if you put too much fertilizer down, you're gonna be promoting top growth on your grass. During the spring, your grass wants to establish its root system. It does not want to promote top growth. If you promote top growth and all that grass starts growing super long and super thick, it's not gonna have that root system to get it through the summer when it absolutely needs it. During the summer, your grass is going to stress out from heat. It's going to look for ways to cool itself down. It needs to conserve all of that energy that it would be using for top growth to get itself through those really, really hot, dry summer months. What you're gonna to want to do is put down a slow release fertilizer at the beginning of the year. You can look on the bag of all of those fertilizers you buy at your big box stores or wherever you buy them and it'll tell you how much of the fertilizer is fast release and how much of the fertilizer is slow release. You're going to want to go with a fertilizer that is more slow release than fast release. Fast release is gonna give off a ton of nitrogen, a ton of food right away and your plants are gonna end up growing super fast and that's not what you want. You want this stuff to slowly dissolve over the spring just so it's still growing with the root system, but it's giving it enough food to establish and be healthy. Number two is do not skip out on your pre-emergent. A lot of people deal with crabgrass every single year and they wonder why they get it year after year. The reason they're getting all that crabgrass is because they're not putting down their pre-emergent in the spring. Now, by the time this video gets to you, we might be getting a little late above the 55 degrees your soil needs to be when you wanna put down your pre-emergent. If it's 60, 65 degrees in your soil, still put down your pre-emergent right now because you're gonna stop at least some of the crabgrass. Yes, you're not gonna stop at all because some of it all are already started germinating, but put it down because you'll stop at least some of it. It keeps growing through the season. It just doesn't start at 55 degrees and stop at 55 degrees. It's still germinating all the way through 55, 60, 65 degrees. So still put down that pre-emergent. If you're gonna overseed this fall, make sure you're doing your calculations where your pre-emergent stops working at that point of September, October, November when you're going to start your overseeding project. You can go on Grass Daddy's website and it'll tell you exactly how much pre-emergent you need to put down for what months, do the calculations for you so you know exactly when that pre-emergent's gonna wear off. Number three, do not hire an irrigation company to come out and start up your irrigation system. Those irrigation startups cost like $50, $60 and it's so simple to do. Do not waste your money on it. I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process on how to start up your system by yourself right now and save you money year after year. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you're starting up your irrigation is find this pressure breaker here. Now, if the person that winterized your irrigation did it right, these little spigots here should be open to allow water to come out when they were blowing everything out. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to close these by turning these a half turn, these screws right here. The easy way to remember this is if the screw is facing with the angle of where the water would spray out, that means it's open. If it's perpendicular like this, that means it is closed. We want these closed right now because if they were open, and you turn on your water, it's gonna spray out all the water out here. Now, same thing with these two, this one here and this one under here, I don't know how good you can see it. But both of these are closed right now because you can tell that they're not lined up even with the pipes. So we're gonna to wanna to open this and this so water can flow from the house and down into your irrigation system. So now that one is in line with the pipe, so that means it's open. Sometimes these things are kind of tough. Oh, there we go. So 
So now you can see it's lined up the pipe, lined up the pipe. These two are closed because we don't want water spraying out of here. This is open and this is open so the water goes down into your irrigation system. The last thing you're going to want to do on the outside here is twist this all the way to the right so it's shut off. Otherwise, when you turn on your water, water will spray out of here. So we're going to shut that off, turn it tight. So now you should be shut off. Water should be able to flow down in your irrigation system, no problem. So let's go down in the basement and show you what you're going to do down there. So once you come down in the basement, you should be able to find the lever that looks like this that's going to be in the closed position. You know it's closed because it's not perpendicular with the pipe. It's horizontal and is looking like it would be shut off like this, shutting the water off, not going up and down with the flow of the water. So this is shut off. This is my, I know this is my outside water pipe. Now, if you're not sure and you have an open ceiling like I have, you can follow the pipe from where your spigot is outside and just follow it all the way down here and, and it will come over to this. Now there's a little twist knob right here on the side. You're going to want to tighten that because what that was doing was leaking water out when they winterized your irrigation. So you're going to want to tighten that so no water comes out. Once you tighten it, you don't want to just like open this thing full force and let the water just flow. You want to very slowly let water out. Let those pipes fill up so that way you're not blasting it with pressure. So slowly let some water out. Let it fill up a little bit, a little bit more. Eventually, your, your pipes are going to fill up and everything's good. We have now successfully turned on our water for our irrigation. That easy. Those are my three tips on what absolutely not to do this spring. If you guys want to see any more tips, please subscribe to the channel, like the video. I'll see you guys next time on Lawn Life.